I have a challenge for you that will grow your skills as a C-sharp developer, will help you expand your network, and could even get your code reviewed by me on this channel. Now, if you don't know me, my name is Tim Corey, and my goal is to make learning C-sharp easier. I do that by providing videos here on YouTube multiple times per week. I also provide courses on C-sharp, web development, and much more on IamTimCorey.com. The profits from those sales are what pays for the free content here on YouTube so that everyone can have a great education in C-sharp, not just those who can afford it. Let's start today by talking about the three online profiles every C-sharp developer should have if they intend to work as a developer. And from there, we'll go on to our challenge. So the three profiles you should have as a developer are a LinkedIn profile. Here's mine. You should also have a Twitter profile. We'll talk about that. And you should have a GitHub profile. So these three profiles are really important if you intend to work in the industry as a developer. And here's why. First of all, the LinkedIn profile, that will get you connected with people and will allow you to apply for opportunities, see when opportunities are available, and maybe even get a, a shortcut into an opportunity that you might not otherwise have if you just coldly apply for something. So really important to work on this network, build up your, your contacts, connect with people, interact with them, and generally just kind of keep track of the people you've worked with or have met. Because by doing that, you will you will see when maybe they move on from a job or maybe they post, they, hey, we're looking for a person for a job. Oftentimes, jobs will even give a bounty to their employees for people they bring in. So for instance, if you find out that you're the person you met earlier at a conference or had worked with earlier, they've got a job opening in their company and you say, hey, can you recommend me or can I you know, get a job at your company? They could put that they recommended you for this job. That can get you in faster and easier and also can get them a bonus from their company for finding you if you get hired. So definitely a good place to start is to have a LinkedIn profile. This is also like your living resume. It's what you've done in kind of expanded form. This is something that a potential employer will look for when they're looking for more information about you. So great thing to have, great thing to fill out and to include all those things that maybe you don't include entirely on a resume. So great stuff there. One of the things that can be really helpful is if you have a section, well, first of all, experience levels, knowing all the stuff that you've worked at and all of different places can be really helpful. But then also having, uh, having licenses and certificates and skills that recommendations and so on, honors rewards. These are things that you might not have on a resume, but can be really helpful to show off an employer to an employer when they're looking for more information about you to see how you set yourself apart from the rest of the field. So LinkedIn, that's definitely a place to check out and start with. And again, uh, here's my LinkedIn profile. Feel free to, to um, connect with me. I'll definitely accept the connection and we can go from there. Um, I don't do a ton of LinkedIn anymore, but just because of the fact that I don't need a job, um, and that's not a primary place to connect with people. However, I still have connections on there. I still connect with people. I still message back and forth with people. So definitely a good place to connect. And it's at least one connection that you can then tag off that to see who else is in my network because I've got a lot of, of .NET developers, C-sharp developers in my network. Now, the second place is Twitter. And some of you are like, hey, I don't want to be on another social network. I hate Twitter. Twitter is awful, whatever. I understand. And you don't have to be on here all the time. You don't have to always be watching the latest stuff, what's going on, that what, what's happening on the right-hand side, don't care. Um, however, there are a lot of people on Twitter that will tweet out great content about C-sharp. So by connecting with them and just following them, you will get a lot of good stuff. So again, here's my Twitter handle, but then you can go my following. There's a lot of people in there you can follow that will have .NET or C-sharp in their title. Check them out as well. 
Um, if you want, I can I can give you some recommendations as well. Tweet at me and ask for them. And I'll see what I can do to get you some recommendations for people to follow because that's how you grow and get to hear the latest stuff and hear about techniques that you might have missed just by kind of insulating yourself into one area of learning. So Twitter is number two. And then number three is GitHub. Having some code out there that you can show a potential employer and say, hey, here's what I do. Now, a lot of my code right now is private just because of, that's the nature of, of the businesses I've worked at before and the customers that I have consulted with and so on. But I do have some public stuff and I'm going to show you how to do even more with this challenge. So this challenge is going to push you in two different areas. First of all, it's going to push you in GitHub and putting public code out there that you can interact with others on. And it's also going to challenge you on Twitter because we're going to interact with your code on Twitter. So here's what we're going to do. Here's the challenge for you. I want you to create one project that solves one little problem. Just one, not something you've already done, not something that is, you know, fully complete. You're just going to copy and paste the code on, on a GitHub. Don't do that. Start with a new idea, something small and tiny. I'm going to give you my example. I'm going to show you my example. I'm actually going to do my example. I'll put some code out there. It'll be not great. That's okay. And from there, you can interact with my code. You can submit pull requests. You can, um, you know, interact on the on the issue form if you want to say, hey, this doesn't work or how you thought about this. But you can also have the same thing for yours and you can continue to practice on your project. And here's why this is important, because when you deploy your project, whatever it is, by doing so, you're going to find a lot of different things where you go, "Ooh, I don't know how to do that. And it's not going to be just C sharp stuff. It'll be I don't know how to do that in Git. I've got a problem in Git. I need to figure that out. And it's going to grow your knowledge in Git. It will grow your knowledge in how do you build a project? How do you set it up for success? How do you create a readme file? How do you interact with people's pull requests? How do you solve problems that people find in your code? All of this stuff will help you grow as a developer. It's going to push you. It's also going to be something where people may come onto your your GitHub and say, hey, on this on this project, I think you could do this. And they give you a, a suggestion for how to make it better. And that can grow you as a developer too. So here's what we're going to do. We're all going to do this. I want everybody to find some project that you can start from scratch and start building up over time. Again, don't just dump a whole bunch of code on here. I want you to build it up over time. And I also want you to interact on somebody else's project. That way, you will not only work on your code, you'll also see somebody else's code and you'll be able to interact with that code and learn and grow from it and help somebody else. That will get you known by somebody else. That will start building up your connections. Other people will know you as a C-sharp developer. Employers will look at your GitHub profile and see what you can do. So pick something small. I'm going to walk through with you the whole process of how to do this, but I want you to do it as well. And I want you to see your projects. Now, if you contribute on this, if you make something small, make something that does something cool, something small, again, something tiny. But if you do, I may do a code review of your project at some point, not right away. And if you just dump code on GitHub, I probably won't do that. I'm going to, re I want to see you build up over time a project. I want to see you grow as a developer and I may jump on and help out, or I may do a whole video on, Hey, these are some projects that I saw that are pretty cool and you might get featured in that. So not guaranteeing anything here, but I want you to work towards this. And I want you to grow in the community. Okay. So here's what I do. I want you to start with a, an idea, come up with something small. Okay, so get get notepad out, get a piece of paper out and come up with some ideas. So the idea that I had was, and it's actually something I built recently. So I'm going to start with something that's half built 
It's ugly. We'll start over. But the idea I had was I want to uh, zip Visual Studio projects. That's it. I want to create a zip file of Visual Studio projects. But here's the deal. Visual Studio projects have in them a bin directory and they have an OBJ directory. Both of those directories have the compiled code of your project. They take up a ton of space. So for instance, a, I was working on a project recently. The project was over six megabytes when I just zipped the whole thing out. When I took out the bin and OBJ folder, it would shrink down to 200 kilobytes. That's a big deal difference. There's also the hidden git folder and the hidden .vs folder and some other folders that are hidden and that you don't want to include, the .suo file, those kind of things. So I want to make sure those weren't included either. So I create a little project that all it does is zip up Visual Studio projects, excluding those things I don't want. That's it. Another one that you've probably, you have seen a lot if you've watched my YouTube content and you probably never even noticed it was my title card. Let me show you again. This is my title card, right? Well, this thing right here is just an image viewer. That's all it is. In fact, there it is. This is a little WPF project that I created to show off images in a way that I could just show them full screen and then I could minimize them. And that's what, how I do my title cards is just that little project. That's all it does. It's not complicated. It has the ability to full screen maximize with no, with headless, like with no maximize, minimize button, that kind of thing. It has a right click menu with two things, load directory and exit. That's it. And if there's multiple uh, images in that folder, I can hit the arrow keys to cycle between them. That's all it does. But I tell you what, that project is really helpful to me on, on a almost daily basis. So your product does not have to be big and flashy and, you know, incredibly awesome. It can be just something really tiny. That's what I have done with multiple things. So think of something small, tiny, that would solve a little bit of a product problem for you or solve a little bit of a problem for somebody else. Find a tiny problem and solve it. Or if you want to build a tiny little game, I'm not talking about a Unity game with 3D and all the rest. I'm talking a command line game, or I'm talking about a little uh, wind form game that maybe has some 2D stuff to it, or a trivia game, or you know, there's a to-do list inside WPF, or there's the list is endless of little projects you can solve a little problem with. But try something little, okay? So this is mine. Uh, zipping up Visual Studio projects. It's all it's going to do. Now, I can think of a lot of cool stuff this could be. This could be a Visual Studio extension, and it may be at some point. This could be, this right now is a self-contained executable file. That's all it is. But it could do some other cool stuff, like it could rename that zip file when it saves it, or it could name it off of a solution file, or it could be in the right click menu of my windows. There's a lot of things it could do, but the first thing is, this is the primary goal of it, is just zip Visual Studio projects up. That's it. So that's my idea. So you come up with a small, easy to describe idea. You can see, you see, I can explain this in about one sentence. This project, zips up Visual Studio solutions without the extra file we don't want. That's it. Or, you know, this solution, this uh, application zips up Visual Studio projects and solutions while removing the bin and OBJ folders. Okay, something tiny and small to explain it. If you have to explain it in five paragraphs, it's too complicated. Try one or two sentences. Now, from there, I want you to take this idea and go over to GitHub. And I want you to hit this little plus button right here and say new repository. 
Now, give it a name. I'm gonna call mine the VS Zipper for Visual Studio File or Visual Studio Zipper. Okay. What it does description? Um, this application zips up Visual Studio projects and solutions without unnecessary files and folders or files like the bin and OBJ directors. And I should say files slash folders. Now, that was a bit more, um, let's spell unnecessary correctly. Unnecessary, there you go. Um, that's a bit longer than my first two attempts at that, but that's still one sentence and it still explains it and it's not overly wordy. So this is enough to tell you exactly what this thing does. It's a public repository. Make sure it's public. Add a readme file. Add a git ignore file and make sure you choose the templates of Visual Studio. Now, for licensing, you should include a license because unless you're saying, hey, no one can use this, this code, you wanna make sure you include a license. So if you don't know which license to include, click the learn more. The learn more will talk you through the licensing and say, okay, here's a different type of licensing, or you can use this choose a license. I like this better, choosealicense.com. I need to work in a community, okay? So that would be, um, you know, it's got a couple of suggestions here. MIT license, simple and permissive. Okay. I care about improvements, the uh, GNU GPL version three and so on. I'm going to choose MIT. That's probably the most, the one I recommend the most is it lets people do almost anything they want with your project. Okay. That's, that's simplest. It's easy to use, but you know what? there's more licenses available if you want to check out other options as well. So for us, we're going to choose the MIT license. It will hit create repository. So this creates for me a new repository for my VS zipper project. Now I need to edit this readme and make it better. Wait to do that until after you go to the next step. I want you to go to code and copy this URL. This little button right here will copy it for you. Now, open up Visual Studio. When you do, clone a repository. Paste in that URL. You can also search for it. You can browse your repository if you have your Git connected or you can connect Git to your Visual Studio. Hit clone. When you do, it opened the wrong screen, of course. Um, let me pull it over here. It's going to open up like this. This is all you have right now. It's in the, I believe the folder view. Yep. Folder view. So click this little icon right up here where it says switch between solution and available views. Click that once. This is now the solution view. You can close out this little, um, message up here. Now go to file new project. Now this is going to be a console app because I want it to run and close back down. I don't want it to be um, anything complicated. I want a console app. Maybe in the future I create another version that is a you know a WPF app or something like that. But for right now, console app. I'll probably have a class library at some point too. But again, right now, one app, console app. Hit next. I'm going to call this the VS Zipper is the console product name. So the solution name, I wanna to change to VS Zipper app. And yes, create a solution like so. Now this is trying to change the location for where it is. Um, let's go over to repos. I believe that's where I saved this. So this is going to be the VS Zipper project. Okay, um, so now I hit next. Yes, .NET 6 already exists. Okay, no problem. So let's 
That's because I didn't actually put it in the directory of VS zipper. Let's do that. We're going to put it in the VS zipper directory. So find that directory. Make sure that you um, put it in the directory that was created by your, um, your Git profile. So this is the directory where we already have open right now. We have our project name. We have our solution name. We hit next. Yes to .NET 6. That will create the project in our, our um, correct folder. We have everything now in source control. So I'm going to remove this code that I don't want. Put some blank lines in here. I'll hit control S to save it. So now if we go to get changes, notice that I have the solution has been added, the CS proj and the program.cs file have all been added to my repository as new files. Let's select all of them and say stage. And we're going to give this a commit of initial code commit. We're going to commit and sync. That's going to send the files up to my, um, my GitHub repository. And now I can just start working on this project. Now, when I minimize this and go back over to GitHub, I have my, my VS zipper app with my solution and my project inside of it. You can start working on that immediately. So you can start um, making changes on it and get your app up and running. So that was just getting your project into GitHub and getting it going. Now, I think I might actually um, rearrange this and move this up one level. Um, I'm not liking how I did that, but I'll tweak it. So the, the important thing here is to get your code into GitHub, get it ready to go. And then I want you to do this. I want you to update your readme. Now, there's a number of different ways you can work on this. One way is you can just hit the edit button right here. Start working on a change. You can even preview them so you can see what the changes are and how they're going to look when it's rendered. Because markdown, this is in markdown. Notice the, um, let's zoom in, way zoom in here. Um, notice the, the hashtag there, pound sign, that indicates a level, just one of them indicates a H1 tag, which is what you get right here. And then you can have other things like you can have, um, you know, star for test, test two, and that becomes bullet points. Or you can do the same thing with one, like so, and then those become um, num an ordered list. Okay, now I'm going to zoom out here a bit, and you can see um, there are changes now, but I can cancel those changes. Yes, I want to leave. I don't want to have those changes. Um, but what I'm going to do instead of modifying my read me right in line, I am going to go to my computer and I could open up Visual Studio and try and get that to edit the read me. It'll work okay, but here's the deal. It's not going to be as good as Visual Studio Code if you have access to that. If you have installed, VS Code is the way to edit files. So right click on your solution, open folder in File Explorer. That's going to give you your path. It's also going to allow you to go up one level and grab from here. I'm going to work out with VS Code. I'll also move around these, these folders because I don't like where I put my solution and my project. Let's close this out. I will open up VS Code. And in VS Code, I can say open folder. I can paste in my path and hit select. And that will allow me to see everything. So I can take this VS zipper app. I can expand it and go, oh, hey, look at that. I have my solution and my app and all the rest. They're all in the root. I don't like that. So let's grab, um, let's grab this folder and the solution. We're going to drag up to the top. If I drag it correct, let's drag to the bottom. Yep, I want to move them. Okay, so now I've moved into the correct place and this VS app has nothing in it. So I can go ahead and 
delete that. Yes, delete it permanently. And it says, hey, I'm busy. Um, retry that. Well, we'll get there. Um, but that, we'll get rid of that in a minute. So with that, now we have, um, we've moved things around a little bit. I can go to my readme file. And here I can have a preview. Notice this icon right up here that says, hey, preview. Click that. And now side by side, I have a preview with my readme document. So I can say via zipper app. And then I can say right here what my roadmap is. And the roadmap is just things you want to do. And maybe you can say that. Um, these are the things I want to accomplish. Okay, like so, and then start in on your, maybe a bullet point list so you don't have to uh, pretend they're ordered because they might not be ordered. But I want to be able to um, zip up a directory and all subdirectories. And I can put another star and say, I want to be able to exclude um, hidden folders and files. Exclude known or exclude files and folders. I specify bin, obj, etc. And I can continue on. Um, add to right click menu uh, in Windows. Allow for rename of zip file during creation. Okay, these are just, just your ideas, the things that you want to accomplish with this application. You're not promising them for version one, you're just saying, hey, these are the things that I want to do so that people know, hey, this is kind of where they're thinking about going. This is kind of the idea they have on their application. Maybe you do have a, a version one, a version 1.1, a version 1.2. If you do, cool. But just some ideas of things you want to accomplish works just well, just, just as well. So um, with that, I think I'm going to leave that alone. Now, I might spend a little more time on that and make that prettier. I might add more things to it. I might have you know, an other cool ideas list where they're not exactly on the roadmap, but they're things that I might want to add in the future. But I encourage you, update your readme to let people know where you're going with this app. Now, if you have the app to the point where it's working, I would highly recommend that you have instructions for how to use it. Okay, so and maybe this, maybe this right here should be... Um, there we go. Roadmap. Better. So now if you have you know, there isn't way to install it yet, but you have your installation instructions there. Okay. So you have your installation instructions, you have your roadmap, and maybe you have a Here's how to contribute if you have thought that through. But this README is how to communicate with the people who want to use your application. Be very clear here on how this application is going to help them. Now, once I actually have a working application, I will have installation instructions. I will have uh, how to use it instructions. I will have screenshots. I will have a more full explanation beyond just my my one sentence explanation, I will have below that, I'll keep that there, but I'll have below that a more full description of how this application works and why it's valuable. But for right now, I'm just starting out. So now that I've started out, I'm going to commit all these changes. So let's go over to Git, and I'm going to select all the changes, and I will say, stage changes, and I'm going to say um, moved solution and updated readme. 
the check mark and sync those changes. That's gonna do a push and a pull. What that will do is it will put my changes here on GitHub. And now GitHub has my solution in the root. It has the, the project um, one folder deeper. Basically, it's exactly what I want for my layout there. And now what I've got is a roadmap and installation instructions aren't really there, but you know, this is my, what I want to accomplish with this project. This communicates to my viewer, here's where we're going since this is not a completed project yet. Now it's still good even after it's completed in its first version, but this at least gives you an idea, hey, here's where we're going. Now, once you have done that, so your goal is to create a small, easy to describe idea, create the GitHub repository for it, create your basic starter solution, fill out the readme with your roadmap, and then what I want you to do is I want you to copy this, copy this link. I want you to go to Twitter. If you don't already have a Twitter account, create a Twitter account, right? And then I want you to create a tweet. So I'm going to go to Twitter and I create a tweet. All right, yes, Calvin Hobbes, they're awesome. Um, so I create a tweet that says, all right, um, I just started a new project on GitHub. It will, and then explain what your project's going to do. Allow you to more easily zip up Visual Studio projects without the extra stuff you don't need. Okay, then say, check it out at, and paste in that URL. And then this is very important because this is how you get known and communicate to the rest of the community that's also doing the same challenge. I want you to put a, um, a hashtag and say C sharp challenge. Okay, that's the first one. And the second one is make sure you tag me. I am Tim Corey dot, I am Tim Corey. It's not dot com. Um, so tag me and also have that C sharp challenge hashtag because that hashtag is how you're gonna look up all the different challenge participants is a search for that C sharp challenge um, tag, all right? So explain your project in very brief detail. Include the GitHub link to it. Include the hashtag C sharp challenge and tag me, all right? Then start working on your project. Do not try to get your whole product done today. Just get this done today and then start every single day you can. Not every day. This is not, you know, there are challenges out there like, okay, I want you to do a hundred straight days of coding. That can be great if you want to do it, but it's also a good way to burn yourself out. We're not looking for every single day, but put it on the calendar, schedule it out, plan to work on this project frequently. And then every single day where you do some work on the project, we got the link again, say, hey, I just did some more work on, and then put that hashtag C sharp challenge and tag me, okay? That will start communicating to the rest of the community, hey, here's what I'm doing. And what I want you to do is I want you to work on your project and I want you to pick somebody else's project and work on it as well. So I want you to maybe go to mine. Don't just go to just mine though, okay? I'm not looking for tons of contributors. I'm looking for you to contribute on somebody else's. So go to somebody's uh, GitHub link, check it out, go, oh, that's kind of cool. You know what? I think I could probably do this and maybe start by just going and opening a an issue. Go to issues and say, hey, you got a new issue. And just say, have you thought about this? Or could I do that? And ask first. Ask them for, hey, would you mind if I create a pull request to, you know, make this better or add some unit tests to this or to improve your readme or whatever it is, help them out in some way, okay? 
start contributing in at least one other project besides just your own. What this is going to do is you've picked one project to work on. You've picked one idea and start working on it. But you can go to other projects and contribute in an area that might not be anything like your current project. It's going to expand your knowledge beyond just the things that you've been thinking about. It's also going to help somebody else out. It's going to get somebody else to know who you are. It's going to get your work out there in more projects. And you can work on something cool. And so you'll be working on multiple projects instead of just your one idea. This way, you're building up a community. You're building up your idea of, of what you want to do. And you are participating in a larger community than just yourself. So this is my challenge to you. Do this a lot. I would like to see that in the next six months that you have about 30 to 45 contributions to both your project and somebody else's. I'm not saying 90 contributions total. I'm saying 45, try for 45, where you've contributed, you know, maybe 20 to your project and 25 to somewhere, somebody else's or to multiple others you know, five to each project, something like that. So try to contribute that much because as you grow as a developer, you'll be able to contribute more and that will in turn allow you to um, grow even more as a developer. The more you contribute, the more you're going to learn. So try it out. Start small, start tiny, but grow over time. So that's my challenge to you is to build your own project like this and contribute to both your project and somebody else's project in the next six months. Not just once, not just twice, but a lot, okay? And let's see how you can build this community up and build your skills and your ability to interact with others because that will make you known. I can't wait to see how you grow as a developer over these next few months. And if you're watching this video and it's three months later, or six months later, don't think, oh, I missed the boat. Start today. The best time to start is always today. So start today and start working. You may have more product to contribute to because there are people who have done it before you. And if you're starting when the rest of us are starting on January, I think third is that's a great time to start because it's today. Start today and kick off this year in a way that will help you grow as a developer and grow your ability to network with others. So remember LinkedIn profile, Twitter profile, and GitHub profile. Those are the three things as a developer in the community that you need if you want to get a job in the community, get a new job in the community, and or even be prepared to have a new job if for whatever reason you were to lose the job you have. Right. So take on this challenge, create the project, tweet it out. Don't forget the hashtag C sharp challenge and tag me at I am Tim Corey. All the information is down in the description. So the links to my profiles, the links to the uh, the hashtag and what to put in the tweet is down in the description as well. So check those out and leave a comment. Now, you can't put your GitHub URL or any other URL in the YouTube comments. YouTube will eat it. So if you see that YouTube is eating your comment, check that out. Also, if you say ASP.net, just so you know, YouTube thinks that's a link. And so again, it will eat it sometimes. So I'm not deleting your, your comments, but post down in the comments. Hey, I did this. Hey, you know, I'm working on the VS Zipper app or I'm working on a name your app. Again, not a URL, just a name. And then we'll check that out on Twitter and interact there and connect and see if we can't help each other out, build and grow as developers. All right. Thanks for watching. As always, I am Tim Corey.